My name is Talgun. I'm an undergraduate geology student from St. Xavier's College, Mumbai. And today, I'll be talking about a very special kind of mineral. And in the span of just a few minutes, you'll get to know what really makes it so special. Magnetite, a commonly occurring iron oxide, is the most strongly magnetic mineral found in nature. Apart from its characteristic ray to black color and a black streak, it can be easily identified due to its property of magnetism. With an iron content of roughly 72.4%, it is one of the very few minerals that are so strongly attracted to a common magnet. Some specimens of magnetite are automagnetized, which means that it has the ability to attract small pieces of iron and other magnetic objects. This form of magnetite, known as lodestone, was man's first encounter with the property of magnetism. Pliny, a Roman author, explained in his work naturalist historian that it was a Greek shepherd named Magnus who first discovered magnetite on Mount Ida while pasturing his flock when he noticed that pieces of lodestone clung to the metal nails in his shoes. Some researchers suggest that the name magnetite comes from the location Magnesia in present-day Turkey which used to be an important center of iron production. In fact, the earliest compasses were made of lodestone. See Nan, the first ever compass was invented in China between the 2nd century BC and the 1st century AD with the lodestone placed as a compass needle on a flat bronze or copper plate in which symbols, lines and writing were engraved. In the year 1600, Britain's William Gilbert discovered that Earth itself acts like a giant magnet. However, explaining how it acts like a magnet and maintains its magnetic field is a relatively new discovery. The idea is that a large dynamo exists within the Earth's outer core, where liquid iron constantly moves as the planet cools. The electrons move through the liquid and this continuous motion creates fluid convective currents. Through this process, the energy of the moving fluid is converted into a magnetic field that can be sustained for billions of years. Scientists have been studying Earth's magnetism and its fluctuations by studying specific rocks. How? Well, the present is the key to the past. Many rocks contain iron-bearing minerals like magnetite that act like tiny magnets. In the 1950s, it was discovered that when magnetic minerals cool below a temperature called the Curie temperature, the magnetic mineral takes on an orientation parallel to an external magnetic field present at that time. As the magma cools, the magnetite mineral begins to form and becomes aligned to the Earth's magnetic field. When the rock finally solidifies, these minerals will lock in the magnetic field at that time. The study of rocks that records the Earth's magnetic field is called paleomagnetism. The composition of magnetite consists of divalent and trivalent iron. The fact that magnetite consists of both ferrous and ferric iron oxides, which are generally not supposed to be stable at the same time, makes it a unique mineral. And this unique mineral is not only abundant in rocks, but also in living organisms. Studies have shown that there exists a type of bacteria called magnetotactic bacteria, which have organelles containing magnetite crystals. These crystals orient themselves along the magnetic field lines of Earth's magnetic field that force the bacteria into alignment. Even the dead cells are dragged into alignment, just like a compass needle. On the bacteria's death, magnetite particles get preserved in the sediments as magnetofossils. In fact, biogenic crystals of magnetite are found in several species of birds which are known to incorporate magnetite crystals in their upper beak for magnetoreception that gives them the ability to sense the direction, polarity and magnitude of the ambient magnetic field. Chetons, a type of mollusks, have a tongue-like feature known as radula covered with magnetite-coated teeth or denticles. The hardness of magnetite helps in breaking down food and its magnetic properties may additionally aid them in navigation. Magnetite is ubiquitous in the universe. The Earth is bombarded by a large number of meteorites every year. Most of them are small and burn in the atmosphere, but a few of them are big enough to reach the surface and can be collected to give information on extraterrestrial mineralogy. 
A group of meteorites called carbonaceous chondrites are the least altered samples we have of the material that formed the early solar system. It has been suggested that they contain material with a composition similar to that of interstellar dust. Magnetite is often found abundantly in these meteorites. Permanent magnets placed on board the Mars Exploration Rovers have also detected the presence of magnetite along with other magnetic minerals on the Martian surface. If a fragment of rock from a planetary body is magnetized, it suggests that the body experienced large-scale melting in which heavier material sunk to the interior to form a metallic core and lighter material floated to the surface to create a rocky crust. Mars does not have a magnetic field generated by a core dynamo today, but the magnetization in Martian rocks indicates that it did have a strong global field billions of years ago. Today, magnetite not only serves as a major ore of iron, but it is also widely used in the coal industry. Magnetite nanoparticles have a range of applications in the environmental and biomedical fields. It is fascinating to me that by studying magnetic minerals like magnetite, Scientists can reconstruct the history of changes in the Earth's magnetic field, which might also give us clues as to how it might fluctuate in the future. So, these were some of the reasons why I feel magnetite is so special and this is what makes it my favorite mineral. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.